Hey guys, I have another review planned out with a bunch of clips and it's going to be way longer than this one, but before I get started on that, I'm going to talk about another film that I saw in theaters that, for some reason, had it only for one screening and for one night only, and that was Ride Your Wave, the latest film from Masaaki Yuasa. Since his feature film debut, Mind Game, back in 2004, he has shown time and time again he can make these grand spectacles while telling a pretty grounded story and making it somehow easy to understand amidst all the chaos he throws at you. He recently just came off a huge 2017 by directing two films, Night of Short Walk on Girl and Lou Over the Wall, and is currently directing his first series in six years, one of the early frontrunners for Anime of the Year in 2020, Keep Your Hands Off Azekin or Keep Your Hands Off the Film Club, a show that he decided to direct because he saw someone online say he should and has an opening that directly references the Drake meme. And it's because of his past works that this film had a fair amount of discussion back when he first announced it in October of 2018. But before I mention anything, I'm gonna go through the synopsis really quickly. Not the entire movie, but at least enough to where you would get it without spoiling it. The movie follows a surfer named Hinako who moves to a new town and falls in love with a young firefighter named Minato, but after Minato dies while trying to save someone from drowning, Hinako becomes really depressed and not only moves back to her hometown, but also gives up on surfing entirely. But while she's going through this, she finds out basically Minato has turned into a water ghost, that's the best way I can describe it, but only she can see him. Considering Yuasa is mostly known for what he could pull off visually, I'm going to start there. For people who don't know, the studio behind this film, Science Saru, is also the people behind easily the best anime of 2018, Netflix's uh, Devilman Crybaby, also directed by Yuasa. This is a prime example of Saru using what they were given in the world of 2D animation, using both basic and exaggerated movements to their advantage. This is kind of the case with Ride Your Wave. Obviously, with Devilman being a dark fantasy, it's portrayed in a different light, but it still works the same. As you notice, this film does have that Yuasa feel, and all you needed to look at was how the characters moved and how it was captured from various shots. Also, completely unrelated note, love the food. The soundtrack was done by a woman named Michiru Oshima. If you've never heard of her, you have definitely heard her work, whether it's from the 2003 edition of Full Metal Alchemist, to a few Godzilla movies during the turn of the century, or any of Yuasa's other works, it's safe to say she's made a name for herself, and in Ride Your Wave, she brings in these orchestral tracks that had a more lighthearted and empowering tone to it, even towards the second half of the movie. I do have something to say about the song that's played in the film, but to do that, I have to put up a spoiler warning, so you have been warned. In the first part of the movie, both Hinako and Minato really bond over a song they both say they haven't heard in forever, and it's foreshadowed that the song will be playing a part later in the film. There is even a scene where... It sounds like the two voice actors, they sing the song together, and it's actually really sweet. But after Hinako finds out that she can see Minako when she starts singing their favorite song, I am not joking, in a span of what felt like 15 minutes, she sang the first two lines of that very same song like five times. It got so bad, I heard a couple of people in the theater groan after hearing it that final time. All I can say after that is, thank God they stopped when they did because otherwise, the rest of this movie would have been unbearable. Point is, after hearing the full song at the end credits, the song itself wasn't bad, but the repetitive use of just the first two lines didn't sit well with me at all. The only character that really brought anything to the table was Hinako, and rightfully so. Her decision to go out to the world and learn to help someone in need after finding out Minato was doing that for his entire life, and ironically is also what led to his death, is a somewhat healthy one in her part in terms of development. As for the three other main characters, Minato, uh, Minato's friend Wasabi, and Minato's sister Yoko, there wasn't really that much development from them, but then again, it felt like there wasn't any room for them to do so anyway. But even with that, the interactions they had were very engaging, and the dialogue never felt awkward to listen to. The final 30 minutes of the movie was the only part of it that I could directly connect to Yuasa due to its wholesome weirdness that makes me nothing but excited for. Really, what happens is, one thing leads to another, and Hinako ends up surfing d down a building. I'll give Yuasa points for ingenuity. I've never seen that before, and honestly... I don't know if I ever will again, and if I do ever see it again, people are going to point to this movie for inspiring what we might see in the future. Overall, there are two ways that you can see this movie. You can see it either as a cute supernatural rom-com with a story that sounds like it came straight out of the 90s, 
or a story about a woman who can't come to terms with her lover's death and makes an attempt to keep it going internally. While the structure is bland, the story itself is pretty gripping as the topic of how to pick yourself up after a loved one passes away is presented in a way where it's very easy to identify with. When this eventually gets a wider release, wherever you are, I highly suggest you check this out if you're a fan of anything romance or magical realism, but if you are looking to watch more stuff from Masaki Yuasa, and I highly suggest you at least give him a shot, this is not the best place to start. I do suggest Mind Game. It'll, it'll, it'll give you an idea. And then there's a bunch of other shows and movies that he's made that are really, really well done and are unique only to him. As for me, I enjoyed this film, but not enough to where I would see it again. And I'm giving this an 8 out of 10. あの、ですので、ちょっと可愛いさちょっと。はい。ミナトさんを呼んでいただけますか? あ、じゃあ呼んでみましょうか。はい、はい。ミナト。君が流れているみんなも。え、あれ?これは?あれ?ここどこから?どういう?あれ?ここだよ。お、劇中のシーンのように、すぐ水の中に港さんが登場いたしました。